function if the plank goes by uh if the plank is going down by x value then all the string will go by x by two x x one by two mm -hmm. and You can assume. You can assume first of all. You can assume some uh, value x one x two. If you don't, but it's a symmetrical. So I can say, if this is x one, this is also x one. Hmm? Elongation. And if both are x one, then definitely it will only go half way down. So x one. Is the elongation the first? I mean, this one. So this will be definitely only half. So now I got this relation. Only. X one by two yeah. equals x. X one will be two x. Now so you are saying x by two. So no, x one by two equals x. This relation. Mm -hmm. Then this is correct now. So now we have x one value. So what is the net force acting upward? Four k x one. Yes, sir. And, the, and this one should be you can just take it with a capital M into acceleration. And x one you can write as two x. In fact, a is eight k by one. No? Just compare with the formula. So four k x one. See, the plank, a uh, plank is experiencing how much force? Four t. I mean, here one, two, three, four. Yes, and the force is how much? K x one, na? No? Yes. Sir. That is the reason. Understood? Why it is four? So, but the uh... Uh, spring is only not only two spring, no? but the force is how much? Like the pulley is attached to plank, na? So how much force is acting on the pulley? If the tension develops, let's say the extra tension which develops in the spring is T. So T T T T, like this is let's say T less T less. So if because the pulleys are attached to this plank, so they will move together. Hmm? So instead of looking at the force of the on the plank, you can just look at the pulley. If you don't want, you can just do it one step more. So what is the T dash and T relation? T dash is two T. Two T. So what is the net force acting on the plank? Two T dash. We are in here. The two T dash is equal to how much? Forty, na? Yes, sir. And what is T? K X. K X. Two. Yes. And what is X one? Two X. So we got the answer. This is pretty simple. Eight K. The next one is work. Let me check it out. So I hope you can do the rest. Third is done. Oh, yes. Sir. So imagine this uh, question. There is just one more question.
so in situ of block let's say the pulley itself is having mass m and uh, it is attached to the two springs k and k2 now the question is what will be the time period of oscillation of the pulley find time period of Do this question. K by root by n by k one plus k two. No. Sir, but the springs are attached in series. Hmm. They are in series, right? Springs are. Do it from base, no? So assume the the pulley goes down by x, the spring elongates by x one, x two. Then solve it. These two strings will behave in a series of parallel. These two are in series actually. So you can do the same thing. First, you assume the displacement, I mean, elongation in each spring. Then, uh, let's say the this goes down with x, and we can write the constant. So we always start with the constant. So step one is always write the constant. And if you write the constant, it's pretty easy. X equals to Okay, and now what you can do next is uh, one plus two, and you can substitute. <laughs> so what remains same? The tension remains same, isn't it? And so you can add t equals to uh, k one x one, k two x two because that's a it's a single piece of string, so tension will be same. And therefore, you can just substitute. So T by K one plus T by K two. So you can take T from one. What I'm doing is I'm substituting here. The X one from here, the X two from here. I'm getting this answer equals to two <coughs> X. So what we got is two X upon uh, one by this. Uh, Now, if you write the laws of motion for the pulley, the next step is step is writing the laws of motion for pulley because pulley is moving here. You can see that it's going down, and the net pull force is acting upward, which is two t. So you can write two t equals to minus m a. So why minus? Because it's it's going to retard. So Two times two x is 
is minus one. So rest is zero. Okay, so time to define from Okay. So this is what you'll get. It is clear. Yes. So always learn to do from scratch. I mean, although there are tricks, but those tricks will fail in the examination. Or you may get confused also. It's a good idea to write the concept and that will also improve your constant writing ability in various situations. So this is all from the spring. So we can do some uh, energy related problems. So energy related. So we know that the energy of oscillation is a constant quantity and that is equal to half mass of the oscillating body. Omega square a square by omega and a you know, represents the usual stuff. Omega is the angular frequency, a is the amplitude. So in any situation, when you alter one of these, or in a way you can say when the energy of oscillation gets uh, altered because of either you're losing some energy or you're gaining some energy, this may have impact on these two. <clears throat> Now, it will have impact on these two depending on the situation, what you're changing. So now, if you do not change the configuration, the arrangement, it means if the same mass and same spring is connected, the omega remains same. And if you change the energy part only, then it will only affect the amplitude part. But let's say if some new mass comes into picture, <clears throat> or maybe some new spring comes into picture, we modify some configuration in that. So let's say you hit a, a spring and you get a, a stuck with the a spring, then in that case, you're changing omega also. So when you change the configuration, you like uh, when you change the, like, uh, the basic parameter like mass and inertia, like inertia and elasticity, like if you add some mass, if you remove some mass, if you add some spring, you remove some spring. In such case, the first term, the omega will change. If you're not changing any of these, if the oscillating body is same, what is only getting affected is the energy part, then it will only affect the amplitude part. So you need to figure it out that while solving numerical, which component we should be I mean, taking care of, what we could change, what we will remain same. And based on that, we have to uh, calculate the new amplitude of oscillation, new time period, and so many things. Okay. So first of all, you need to remember this formula, energy of oscillation, which is a constant quantity. Omega is the angular frequency, and A is the amplitude of oscillation. So let me take the first question.
So let's say this is the mean <coughs> mean position or position where uh, the spring is in the unstressed condition. And it is oscillating with an amplitude A. So yeah, it is going to, on the right side by the value A with respect to this origin. And also it will go left or right the same value A. So you are moving right and left with A value. Okay. So definitely, what will be the energy of oscillation? Half m omega square is square. Half m omega square is square. But you are also supposed to substitute omega because omega you can find from the regular relationship, right? So what is omega for the spring block system? K by m. So basically, it's a uh, logical that if you can go up to a distance, so the maximum elongation in the spring will be how much? A only. So the maximum potential energy, if you remember, this is nothing but the U max or Ke max. So the answer turns out to be same as the spring energy, right? The elastic potential energy stored in the spring when you are at a deformation A. So this is the maximum energy that you can have, which is also equal to the energy of oscillation. So now this is oscillating. And now what we do is, so while it is crossing the mean position, we gently drop another block of same mass. So while the block I mean, oscillating block. Passes. Through mean position. Another block is. Gently. Dropped. over it that's it and now i'm assuming that now this is the assumption so i'm assuming that both moves together so friction is sufficient for no slipping yes it means friction must be there and that must be uh, enough friction which will prevent any slipping so now assuming both are moving together. If you assume both are moving together, so what we are changing? Are we changing omega, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, so because we are affecting the mass. Now the oscillating mass is 2m, earlier it used to be m only, correct? Yes. So definitely we are affecting the the mass and therefore the omega will be affected now because the block moves together some frictional force will come into picture to move it so are we going to change something else also are we changing the omega uh, sorry energy part sir m hmm? m so no See, we are changing mass for sure. So one thing is clear that uh, the spring and block system, which we used to have earlier, and what we have now, there is a change for it. And because there is a change in the mass, so omega will be affected. One thing is sure. So what about the energy part? Like, is it, possible, is it possible for M to move together just like that? What yes. else uh, we need to think about? Like. Yeah, friction is sufficient for sure. So now because both are moving together, so will it affect the velocity? Yes or no? Yes, sir. No. So why? Because the red block, <coughs> the oscillating block, when it is passing through the mean portion, it will have some momentum. Right? And when you add a mass over it, the same momentum will be because momentum we are not getting from somewhere. So we I have some momentum and some extra mass is landing on me. 
so i'll share the momentum with the extra mass and therefore my velocity will decrease so decrease by half concept, it's same yeah decrease by half exactly because it's the same mass so the first concept is like of course you have to conserve the momentum as well at that instant and the conservation of momentum at that instant will give you the new velocity at that instant which is like a way to understand that the energy content has changed now luckily it's a mean position problem so we know that at mean position what is the velocity luckily we know hmm? oh my god so applying conservation of linear momentum at mean position you can say m into a omega the old one right the old one equals 2m into v and can we write this as v max because when you are at a mean position the velocity is always maximum but this v max will be with respect to the new condition not the old condition so the better way of writing is 2m into a dash omega dash do you realize this what i'm saying here yes sir yes the momentum before this is momentum after and because i am believing that of omega and a dash both will change so i am writing this as a new v max for the new set of uh, like new combination of mass and spring and therefore the momentum we can write like this and uh, here luckily energy conservation we do not need because we can get the answer directly so what we are getting is m a omega because a and omega is known to us in advance uh, for the before situation we can write m uh, a is a and omega is under root of k by 2m a dash which we don't know what about the omega dash k by 2m under root isn't it yes sir this will cancel out so what you can get here is uh, k by m will also cancel out and one more two left so a under root k by m is equals to 2a dash by root 2 k by m this will cancel out so what is a dash now a by root 2 so the new amplitude of oscillation is going to be a by root of course this was a lucky problem in which uh, the energy conservation i mean or energy consideration was not required uh, we got the answer directly but in many situation we need to think of energy also understood so we'll see some problems like where energy is required so we are conserving uh, conserving the momentum here because only force acting between both the masses is frictional force static friction yeah yeah definitely so some momentum i mean the momentum part is conserved because uh, the force at that position is a spring which is non impulsive and we know that in absence in the even in the presence of non impulsive force Uh, we can conserve momentum for that instant. Luckily, here it's a mean position, so there is no spring force as well. Because at mean position, the spring is in its natural length here, and there is no spring force. So we can conserve momentum because of many reasons. First, we are conserving only at that instant. Second, the external force is absent. Even if it is present, we can conserve. Why? Because in case of presence of spring force the momentum conservation will take place only for instant not for long duration okay so this is easy uh, scenario so let me give you some some more difficult scenario
this is going to be very challenging to you guys hope you will understand so you can see there are two walls it will be better if i take the question from the sheet itself because you can check the answer also right so hgm sheet i have shared before yes or no yes sir sure uh, long time back or right now no right now. Okay, i don't see it no, no in the first lecture okay first okay first lecture. okay okay no let me point from the source hmm. Okay, so if you have, you can also open it. Okay, so you can go to question number eight. Page number 19, question number eight. Can you see that? And sorry, question number nine. Eight, so we have solved. Right? We have solved question like eight. Yes, sir. So on page number 19, you can see question number nine. Can you see that? Question number nine is clear. The page number nineteen, uh, PDF nineteen, not your nineteen. If you read the page at the bottom of the PDF sheet, you can see in the figure shown. Hmm? Um, nine nine question number nine. Can you see the question now? Yes. Yeah. So read the question, try it for a while, then answer. I think at least think about what is the question, what you can do, what conservation laws you can apply, is energy conserved, is energy getting lost? If yes, then how much? If it is lost, then what is the new energy of oscillation? So you can do a variety of things and you can get the answer. Do it.
is the question clear what is the question sir, two root two by pi okay, you can check the answer you can check the answer also. if that is matching then it's really great Let me reduction in the figure term. The spring is released and mass and mass of the spring. Compressed by 2A. Oh. And is released. Uh, it will be in front of the And extension. Just a moment. Okay. So if it is, I mean, if it is compressed by two A, what is the energy stored in the spring? That's very easy to find. No? If you compress something by two A, two M plus square A. Energy energy stored will be half K two A square, right? That's simple. But uh, because if if something is compressed by two way, it means it can go forward by two way only. So the yes, ability of the block is to go till here. But what comes in between? A wall comes in because this is only a. So definitely, <coughs> when you come to the wall, you are already stressed by a. So what is the net compression left? Only A, right? So the potential energy at this instant is how much? For heating? Half K A square. So the total energy just before total energy just before heating the work. So the energy just before hitting the wall is how much? It's pretty, we say. Potential plus kinetic. Okay, just at K. So potential will be half K square and kinetic will be rest is kinetic energy, let's call it KE. But the sum of these two will be equal to how much? Half K 2A whole square. Okay, isn't it? Is this part clear? Yes or no? Yes. So this can be solved. No? So what is the kinetic energy? Just before, just before collision. The kinetic energy just before collision will be uh, four minus one, three by two. Okay, so just check it out. And move it on. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, as per the question, how much you lose energy, uh, kinetic energy after the collision? So, loses two third. Oh, so what is the energy left? One third. The kinetic energy left just after collision will be one third of the Ke just before collision. I hope you understand this part. If you're losing two third, what is remaining then? One third. Hello, hello, one, two, three. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if it is losing two third, then what is left? What do you have one there? Third. One, one third. third. Half K. It will be one by two K, so right? Yeah. But your potential at that instant will be same what you had. So what is the total energy just after collision? So total energy just after collision. So a spring will keep the potential equals to half K A square because that we have seen already. So this will not seen because the spring is still having elongation A, so half K A square. But the kinetic energy has changed to half K A square. Okay. 
So the new energy of oscillation is how much? K square. So while bouncing back, while returning, energy part, you can see there is a loss of energy. So now this will go with new energy, which is uh, less than before, for sure. This is the new energy, E dash. But are we changing the mass? No. No. So if you don't change the mass, then what do, what do we expect the new amplitude? So we know the formula, the energy of oscillation is equals to half m omega square a square. So let's call it a dash because why? Omega part will not change. It must be before, I mean, same as before. Why? For the obvious reason, it's the same block, same stream. But the a, the new amplitude of oscillation must change. And to get that, you can check, you can just write here, k a square equals to half m omega so is k by m a simple a dash square what you can realize not k will of course that a dash square is 2a square and therefore the a dash is root 2 okay so now the next question earlier it was able to go a ahead But the wall came in between, so you hit the wall, you lost some energy. And now you can only go, <coughs> so from your mean position, so where is the mean position by the way? The mean, I mean, that will change. It can go back up to root two a, right? Yes. Mm, this moment, uh, the mean is, so a by root of distance. No, not like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so fine, not an issue. So what we can see here is So what we can see here is that if the block is here, let me do the block. And uh, the spring is only elongated by A, right? So if you move A, then what is the elongation of the spring? Because it was the spring was compressed by two A. Now you are at A. So the compression is only left is A. So it can only, it can go up to, this is too big now. A small one. Now this part is slightly important to understand also for you. So what I'm trying to say is that the spring is here. So what is the net compression in the spring left near the wall, if you remember? So See, the spring was initially compressed by two. If the block will move from here to here, now how much spring is still compressed? How much block is still compressed? A only, no? Even if you're here, the compression in the spring is how much? A? Yes. So I can't understand. What is the initial compression in the spring? It's given to A. Okay. When the block will reach the wall, what will be the compression left in the spring? A only, no? Yes, sir. 
you have traveled a so you have unstretched yourself by a so what is still what is the compression is still left a a so naturally how much you can go on the other side minimum like you can go up to a for sure to go to the mean where is where will be your mean position so what to to a distance yes see your mean position will be exactly here na a distance away this is the mean position which is a ahead from this side assuming there is no wall your mean position is how much this much only isn't it the spring is under compression by a value so to make it uncompress how much you can go ahead i mean if there is no wall imagine there is no wall so you can move by a na this is your mean position Oh, yes. if, if you think, I mean, if you look at the answer we got, what is the new amplitude of oscillation? Root two a. Root two a. It means it can go root two a this side. And root two a this side, which is bigger than a. isn't it yes so how much so how much it will go back before coming to rest root 2 minus 1 hmm root 2 minus 1 into j yes and so so now what is the question the question is find the time taken uh, by it to come back to rest again okay so the question is how much time will it take to come back to rest okay so you have to solve this question separately imagine earlier this was your amplitude of oscillation so how much time it will take to go from 2a to i mean so the block was here at a in the very beginning so a distance from the wall this is the uh, sorry uh, a behind a ahead so the block is here in the very beginning let me draw everything so block is here the wall is here at a if you remember this is the wall hmm? this is the mean position and this was your spring connected in the big so you need to first realize the situation okay this is the situation so from your actual mean is here and the wall comes in between so how much time you will take to go from here to here it is half way na no? this is your extreme position this is your mean position and you want to come from extreme to middle of the mean and how much will be that if you remember the answer pi by 4 or p by 12 p by 6 do you remember the answer for any oscillation this is two is the a like like a so because symbolically they have been two way so i also write two way so for any oscillation So to go from sorry, this will be t by six, and this is t by two. So to go from the mean to the half value, what we take is t by twelve, and then half to this will be t by six. Because the sum will be t 
3 by 4. I hope you remember the first lecture. Yes. Yes, sir. So to hit the wall, how much time will it take? That's the first question. So to hit the wall, we will take T by 6. If T equals to 0, this is there. So you will hit the wall at what time? After T by 6 time. Understood? Yes. Okay. Now, your new amplitude of oscillation, your new amplitude of oscillation is only root 2a. So your mean position will be here, but you can only oscillate to root 2a on both sides. So your new oscillation, let me do it once again. Are we affecting the mean position? When you lose the energy, do you lose the mean position also? Or mean will remain same? Think about it. Mean position will only change when the net force will change. And we can see that there is no net force. So therefore, our mean position is still the same. But the calculation shows that our new amplitude of oscillation is only root 2 a which means this is a, so which means it is somewhere here. So without the wall, it can only oscillate this much. And the wall is here. Again, let me do the wall. So the block will stop exactly here. After hitting the wall. So now the question is, how much time it will take to go from here to here, P dash, A to extreme value. So the better idea is, how much time it will take to go from here to here, P double S. And this is easy to calculate Y, because we know how to use the formula for a mean position. So we can write X equals to A sine omega T, just a moment, let me write down. You, you want to go where? From mean a, what is your amplitude? Root 2a sine omega is same, and this is t double s. Do you realize this part? Yes, sir. It is like you want to go from mean to the wall, how much time will take? So, mean to the wall distance is a. Your extreme portion is root 2 a, so that is like your new amplitude. And I, I want to know the time, so I got t dash equals to how much? This is cancelled out. Omega t double dash is 1 by root 2, which is uh, pi by 4, right? 45 degrees, 1 by root 2, right? And uh, 2 pi by t into t <coughs> double dash is pi by 4. So T double dash turns out to be how much? T by eight. Now, if this is T by eight, luckily, so what is this value? Because we know the net is T by four. This is also T by eight? I think so. Yeah. Isn't it? If this is T by eight, what is this value? T by eight. T by eight. So luckily, we got the answer T dash also. So now, what is the total time since the beginning? This t by 6 and t by 8. Isn't it? So we got this answer. So you, so you can see the total time that you come to rest will be first you will hit the wall at t by 6, and then you will go back only t by 8 to come to rest. And this will give you the answer. 8 and 6, uh, 24. 6, 4, 0, 24, 3. So it's a 7 by 24 into time period. And uh, something is given. And T is how much? 2 pi. 
Which question you are looking at? This is exercise. Exercise two, uh, part two, question number nine. Yeah, seventeen. Maybe the mistake seven should be there, and they have written seventeen. Yes, yes. Correct. Let me just check, but I think uh, maybe the answer may be wrong. Don't worry. Typo error is there. Access to yeah. Oh, uh, just let me check. From this will take three by six, three by twelve. T by four minus T by two is T by six, right? The first will be two a to a, so it will hit it here in t by six time, and the second will be from a to only root two a. If our calculations are right, then this is root two a. Is correct. And uh, to go from the wall to the extreme position, which is root two, then you can find the answer from uh, origin to the a. And origin to the a will be x plus a amplitude is root two a sine omega t. Okay. Yes, this is correct. So just rectify this. So you keep it. It's seven answer. Question number ten. You can see we have done already. So now we can do the spin question uh, for a rotation. So we are done with the rotation chapter. So we can do the system which is pertaining to the. Rotational dynamics. So we'll see SHM 
in rotation so how we start solving question of uh, rotation so again we have a very nice question kept uh, given there at the bottom you can go to page number 20 and can, you can see the first question the 15th question can you see 15th question there is a rod which is suspended and the rod can move freely about the hinge Am I audible to you? <laughs> and everything is given. The K is given to you as 2 mg by L. And uh, the spring force constant of each spring is K by 2. As they are at this. Okay. So, what we do in a question of a rotation dynamics? So, first you check the equilibrium position. Now, if you remember the translational SHM, what we used to do is we find the mean position, we displace the body with respect to mean. Now, what we'll do here? We'll tilt the body from the mean position. So, once you tilt, by a small value, so what will happen? The let's say rod is somewhere there, and the tilt angle we assume as theta, and theta will be as good as standing to zero. Okay. Then, what we'll do next is the point of suspension is O, so we always calculate the net torque about the point of suspension. Or we can call it restoring torque. And what we do next after this? So once you have the restoring torque, because it is going to oscillate about the point of suspension, you can always write as I not alpha. Value wise, if you want to put the sign, that's totally okay. Because the restoring torque will be opposite of alpha. So if you want to write in vector form, I mean if you want to solve numerical. Then put a minus n because that's compulsory. Because you're tilting towards the right and the torque is towards left. That's why they are opposite in direction. And what do you do next? You compare alpha equals to so this will be the, the step you need to follow. First step is tilt from the mean position, step two. Find the net restoring torque about the point of oscillation, like about which you oscillate your, the hinge point. And then third is compare with this formula, and you should be done. So can you guys try this question now? Hello, hello, hello. Am audible, guys? Yes. So, so try this out. It's easy. You can do it.
ഒരു ഡിഫറെന്റ് ടൈം പീരിയഡോട് വരുന്നില്ല റോഡ് ബൈ ഷീറ്റ് Okay, for the sake of illustration, I'm doing big angle, but it's very small. Okay. So first of all, you need to do the ABD, which you might have missed. MG is also acting, right? Now, if you tilt by theta, what is the compression in this thing? It will be L theta. This is like an arc of a circle. Yes. So we are assume this is small, so we can assume this is a small arc of a circle. <coughs> so the spring force acting from this side will be k by two into l theta, and this will be pulling towards uh, me by the same force k by two into. And mg is also trying to bring it down only. So all torque is supporting. So the net torque about O will be the sum of all torque. which you don't realize which is mg and this is l by 2 sin theta plus k so if i add this to force it will come k l theta into the distance is l cos theta correct now we'll keep the assumption theta tends to zero so it will become mg l by 2 theta only this is l theta only and this is basically l cos theta is as good as l cos 0 is 1 so now the net restoring torque the torque which is trying to bring it back is not only one value it's two values you can see so what i'm doing this is square x You can see it's mg l by two plus k l square, all into theta. So what is the next step? We have to write this mg l by two plus uh, k is given to us. Mg l theta. This minus moment of inertia of a rod about uh, end is m l square by three. So <laughs> Into one. That's it. so. We can add now two to the four five mg by two theta equals to minus m l square by three into alpha l will cancel out. Okay, m all cancels. <coughs> so alpha turns out to be how much? Fifteen by two g by l into theta with minus one. And if you compare with omega square theta minus omega square theta, you can get easily your answer, which is omega square equals to 15 g by 2. Right? The time period is 2 pi under root. How much? 12 by. I don't know. Can you check the answer? Check the answer if we have done some calculation mistake. Five. 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 Uh, okay, maybe they have uh, done some more calculation. What are they asking? This is the time period. What they are asking? Something different? Mm. 
then find n yes under root n by l mm -hmm. <clears throat> so this is 75 na if put a g value you can get the answer g is let's say g is how much 10 na if you put g equals to 10 you will get the answer 75 So, uh, 75 will be in denominator. Mm -hmm. What so they are asking is this answer. So, they are asking find omega angular frequency. The answer is 15 g by 2 l, yes, which sir. is 150 by 2 l, 75 by l, right? And we have to compare with n by l. So, n turns out to be. So I think 75 is given? Yes, sir. Okay. So for any question of rotation, this is the way to approach. You have to think of first you tilt and the net restring torque. <coughs> the torque which will bring it back. That's it. Then do the question. Let me give one more question. This is also in sheet. Yeah, this is very easy problem of J advance. So come down to the page number 26. Are you there in 26? Yes, sir. 20. Question number nine, you can see. Nine and 10. Yes, sir. Solve these two questions. So remember the steps. If you can understand the step, you can solve any question. What are we supposed to do? The steps are important. If you want to get some help from here, you can see. Here. So which question? Yeah. Question number nine and ten. Nine, you can see there is a one rod, two string. It is now hinge at the center. So now the point of oscillation will be about center so the torque should be calculated about the like the axis of oscillation or point of oscillation the way you understand
Sir, my answer is not matching with options. Okay. Hmm. So what is the what is the question like uh, that? Have you added the torque? So if you tilt by theta, what is the torque value? Can you tell me the torque value? What is the net resistance torque? Sir, uh, for the beta only. Question number you are solving question number nine, na? Yes. So for that question, uh, let me read this. So they are asking the frequency of oscillation, not the angular frequency. Frequency is what? One by time period, inverse of time period. I hope you're getting not the matching still. Okay. So tell me first, what is the first step? You tilt by some angle theta. Yes. Okay. What will be the compression in the spin? If you tilt the rod by a small angle theta, L theta, uh, L by two no. theta, L by two theta, very good. So what is the spring force? K no. L by two theta. Theta. What will be the torque about center? K L by two theta into L by two. Yes. Sir. What is, is the net torque? Push. What is the net torque? K L by two theta into L by two into whole two because we have two such a spring and net torque equals to i alpha what is i here what is the moment of inertia what is the so moment question of number nine right question number nine yes yes i'm writing a question so but where is spring which question you're solving a uniform rod of length l and mass m we wanted to add the center this one or something else a ball is hung vertically by a thread length. No, no, else. not that question. You are solving something else then. You are on a different page. Question number nine, page number, what I said? 26. 26. 26. <laughs> Can you see it now? Um. 26, question number 9. Now you solve it. Yes, Hashish, you got the answer? So now solve it once again. So net torque will be KL theta. Net torque will be K L theta. How it is K L theta? The spring force is how much? K L by two into theta. Huh. Each spring. Both and how spring. much is the distance from the I mean center? It's L by two. So K L by two into theta is the force into 
the per pentacle separation which is l by 2 <coughs> is the torque and we have two springs so we have to add both because both will support the torque okay. yes okay so and what is the moment of inertia in this case <coughs> ml square by 10 very good so you should get the right answer try your luck once again So I'm getting option C. You can check the answer, it's uh, below. option here what are you guys doing then so a l by 2 theta into l by 2 into 2 times equals to m l square by 12 into alpha you can put minus in here so oh so minus k theta equals to m by six alpha. Alpha is how much? Six k by m theta, right? So what is omega square? <coughs> omega is six. So you can write this two pi f because they're asking frequency actually. F is and this is not the answer. Huh? So this is option C and actually whatever is this answer is the right answer. No, I got this. Where is the question? Let me read the question if, if something is else. This I'm solving without reading it. Hopefully any form brought this to
Uh, C is the right answer. C is the right answer. Don't worry. Absolutely correct. <coughs> this is the exercise three, na? No? Question number nine. C is the answer given. So you have checked the wrong answer. This is exercise three, I think. This is the J question, na? No? This is the exercise three, question number nine, and the answer is C given. I think you have seen some other answer. Maybe exercise two. Exercise two. Yeah. So that's the right answer. Don't worry. So now can you solve the question number ten? Okay, but you can do this in tutorial. I mean, why I'm doing this? So we can do something more. Uh, so I will take a new variety of problem, and I want you guys to practice as much as possible. And there is no end to it. I mean, <laughs> so we have a maybe a, a sphere, disc, cylinder, whatever. Let's call it a cylinder. And it is attached to variety of springs. So we have K1, K2, K3, K4. Uh, okay. R is the radius. This is uh, R by 2. Okay. And uh, assuming pure rolling condition. So friction is sufficient to prevent any slipping at the bottom. So what we do is we tilt a bit, like this is how you think about it. So you tilt about, you can take the bottom as a hinge or like a support, like a suspension and tilt like this mentally. And you can call it heater. And take the bottom as the suspension in all such question of the pure uh, rolling motion, when there is no like larger motion. It's just a motion about the mean. Find the net torque and uh, do the same thing. Can you find the time period of position for this case? So you should try this question out. Question is clear? Yes. Okay. Go ahead.
So time period is two pi two by three m r. Hey, just a two pi root under three m r divided by two 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 bracket four k one plus four k two plus two k three plus k four. Four k one four k two plus two two k three plus k four. Okay. So just let me confirm the twelfth part. So twelfth part is pretty much simple. K one plus K two into two uh, R T two R whole square plus K three R square plus K four R by two square whole into theta. I think this is the torque, right? Just check it. Yes. Out. This is the torque. Yes, sir. Yeah, this is the answer. Then correct. Then everything is correct. So very good. And uh, because it's a cylinder, so moment to finish up about the bottom will be three R squared by four. By four. Yeah. So uh, what you said, M R squared by two plus M R squared, no? So it will be three by two. Uh -huh. It's not diameter, no, because this is the axis is for a pinpoint to the plane. Right, R by two. Right. So you're turning this way, no. So this is the, your axis of position is for pinpoint, not diameter. Hmm? Yes. So, okay, fine. <coughs> hmm. Next. So that R will not come. Pardon? R will not come. Answer. Yeah, yeah. R will not come. Yeah, R will not. R come. Actually, R doesn't come. R will not come. Hmm. You can just confirm. Like the rest, you can uh, take the same and. Uh... Okay, just you can check this out. I, I I don't understand this part, so. Just uh, check it from here, and you can get the answer. Okay. So, what other variety of question you can expect? So, I mean, there's endless variety. I mean, the more you solve, you will come across variety of questions. So, I think I should leave uh, for the sake of a tutorial. Yes. It will take a lot of time to finish this chapter. So, one question which I would like to explain here. This we did in the work energy power, but I told you that okay, we'll be solving this in the second part. part. Yeah, second part. So now the same question. Let me bring it back. I hope you remember this question. Yes, sir. Hmm. This is uh, what, what was the question? This was a zero, no? something like this. Yes, and minus a minus zero. Minus a zero, and this is the potential energy graph and x graph relation. <laughs> And the formula here was uh, this graph is like uh, k x square, and this was uh, minus k x. That's it. So here the if you I mean this part is easy because if you find the force here, so for x uh, less than zero. The force is minus the del u by del x, and if you do so, uh, you will get the answer k, which is a constant. So we can find the the acceleration as uh, k by m because that's easy. <coughs> and then because a is constant, so we can write a s equals to oh, this is acceleration. I mean, confusion. Tangential acceleration, something like this. 
so the a uh, <coughs> the distance this is the distance a so a is equals to a and uh, uh, this we can write as half a t1 is for it's called you take t1 to travel from here to here and uh, <coughs> we have to find this on also t so t1 is how much uh, <clears throat> but if you do for the x more than uh, zero, if you do it for more than zero, then uh, the force will be minus uh, d by dx of k x square, which will give you minus two uh, k x. And so the acceleration will be minus two k x by m, but this is the equation of SHM, right? <coughs> because it's a linear relationship between a and x, so this is a SHM equation, and therefore the time period to go from the mean to x, because this is the mean, this is x, which is t by four. So let's find the time period. So time period will be two pi under root uh, m by two k, right? So the t two will be how much? T by four, which is pi by two, and therefore the the total time t equals to you can say t one plus t two, which turns out to be something very interesting. So two m uh, a by k uh, and uh, plus pi by two m by two. So this kind of question uh, is a pattern of J advance only, and you have to think this way. That okay, if the question is coming as SHM, then we have to think uh, in this particular fashion. Is this clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So what we should do now is okay. So we'll do now variety of other uh, problem that you will come across. We have to learn about simple pendulum, uh, compound pendulum, torsional pendulum. We have to also understand the SHM in fluid mechanics, SHM in gravitation, SHM in other chapters. So let me explore uh, through various chapters. So we'll start with the pendulum. Simple pendulum. So every pendulum will have a a string, and at the end of the string, we may attach a a bob. I'm just doing a large size bob for the sake of some illustration. And even the bob will have some uh, radius. So if it is a informed sphere as kind of thing, so this is the center of mass. And the distance uh, between the point of suspension to the center of oscillating body 
Now this could be anything. So what we are taking the center of oscillating body. <clears throat> this is called length of pendulum L. But because we have attached a string here, this length will be written as capital L. So the small L is a definition. Capital L is a geometrical value. So what is a small L definition? This is called length of pendulum, and this definition is true for a wide variety of problems. Need not to be just a pendulum. So, <clears throat> how we define it? It is uh, am I audible, you guys? It is defined as. as the distance between point of suspension and uh, <coughs> center of mass of oscillating body so basically l we can write as capital l plus r now capital l we measure it is measured using meter scale and meter scale will have the accuracy up to 1 mm or the error will be One millimeter. So the error of a meter scale is one millimeter in general by default. <coughs> you know what is the meaning of error? So if you see, there are two lines which they draw. The closest line will have a separation of one millimeter. So you cannot measure <coughs> less than one millimeter. So that's called error or the least count of the instrument. So this is what you studied in the very first uh, lecture: error and measurement in capital. And how we measure R? So R is generally small, so it is measured using <coughs> a screw gauge, sometimes as vernier caliper. Okay. This is your point of suspension. So to understand the small n l l n capital L, imagine there is a a hollow sphere which is filled with water. In the very beginning, it is completely filled. <coughs> So the small l will be distance from the center of the the hollow sphere and the length of the string. We will add l plus r. Now, if I puncture the ball at the bottom, the water starts leaking out. So as the water will start falling down, the center mass will be same or will change. Yeah, yeah. So if if we have a ball which is half filled with water, center mass will be at center or below the center? Below the center. So if you are having a water filled, so center mass will not be center. Center mass will be below the center. So <coughs> as water will leak out, the center mass will change. Yes or no? Yes. So the small l will change yes or no? Yes. So a small l is the distance between the suspension and the center of mass, and if the center of mass is variable, it will be also a variable quantity. So l is not a constant quantity. Capital L is a constant because that's the length of string. Understood? 
So the small l is a definition, capital L is a concept, I mean, a geometrical value, and we need to understand these things. <coughs> they are not same. Is this clear? Yes. Great. Hmm. Okay. So we will take a situation when the the size of pendulum is very small compared to the length. So if R is very, very small compared to length of the string, the L is as good as capital L. And that is why in most of the numerical solving, the L is taken as the length of the string itself. But you have to be careful in a conceptual question while answering. It. So in conceptual question, you need to understand the definition. In numerical, you can take the length that's totally okay. Is this clear? So this is very, very important. The definition versus problem solving. So for any suspended object, the equilibrium will be achieved only when it is exactly below the point of suspension. Or in a way you can say if the center mass is below the suspension, it is the equilibrium position. And it is the case in this case here. So the center mass you can see exactly below the suspension, isn't it? And uh, for the sake of writing, because see, I'm not considering uh, <coughs> the dimension much. So I'm saying the length of the string as L, which will be also with the length of the pendulum. So, but you have to keep in mind that the length of pendulum, length of string are different ones. Okay. So now because this is equilibrium position, what we do next, we tilt by a small value. And if it is by small value, so this is cheaper, <laughs> and uh, you can see. so there are various methods you can solve torque and all. So torque about O is how much? It's only gravity because there is nothing else. So tell me guys, torque about O. Mg L sin theta. Hmm? But theta is tending to zero, so this is. So torque about O equals to minus I about O into alpha. It's a point mass, so. What is moment of inertia of a particle about uh, axis? Hmm? So much? it goes to moment of inertia. So what is the moment of inertia of this uh, bob with respect to O point, the axis passing through? Oh, ML square. This is easy, ML cancels. So alpha will be minus G by L into theta, and therefore you can equate with Omega is uh, root G by L, so time period will be 2 pi under root L by 
Now you may get this question in variety of question like when it is uh, accelerating in a trolley, moving in elevator, and so on. So the formula which you need to modify is simple. Just make it L by G fifty. And if you remember the laws of motion chapter, you know how to find the G. Yes. If the elevator is going up, G plus A. Down, G minus A. Circular motion. I mean, G plus G square plus omega square R under root and so on. So let's say if we have a trolley. If we have a trolley, and it's moving in a this circular track, so the bob will oscillate about this position, and it will have a uh, omega square uh, r axis and towards uh, away, radially away, and g below. So the g effect will be how much? Under root of <laughs> g square plus. This is the omega because of the rotation, like not uh, omega of uh, SHM. This is the angular velocity, right? So in a variety of situation uh, to find the time period, you have to just do this trick. Is this clear? So again, I am leaving this as an exercise because we have done in the laws of motion how to find the g effective for variety of situations: lift, elevator, circular motion. <coughs> and if you go in the water, then uh, buoyancy will also come into picture. So you have to change the answer uh, in terms of buoyancy uh, as well. Uh, fluid mechanics we have done. Hello, guys. Yes, sir. Are we done with the fluid mechanics? Yes. So you can find time period for variety of situation. Just find the g effective and go. Ahead. If you don't understand anything, do it from the scratch. So <laughs> there are many methods of solving systems. You can think this way also, uh, just to give you a perspective of thinking. If you tilt a pendulum by theta angle, it is as good as thinking that this pendulum is kept on an inclined plane of angle theta. Both are same situation always. In fact, jointly, if you find this is theta, but this is the tangent. This is the right angle. Uh, or it doesn't look like triangle. I mean, perfect plus a little bit more is better. So you can find this is ninety degrees. So definitely this will be this is ninety minus theta. This time, this is theta. This is theta. So you can see that uh, this these two are eventually same situation. So I'm just uh, removing this part. So when you think this way, so gravity will act this way. So, what is the net force acting down the plane? If you remember the component and all, because this is the only direction in which you can move, right? So, the net force can act as net force plus two, mass into acceleration. But we take theta x in this direction, so we can put minus m mass. And what about the sine theta? Because if theta is really small. So if we call it x, so you can just write as minus mg x by l. So we are assuming that your x distance away from the mean position, and of course this is happening at a small scale, so these diagrams are not accurate. So a turns out to be minus g by l x, and you can see if you compare with 
omega square x, so you can get the same answer, just a way of solving this question. We can also solve by the energy conservation. In fact, every question we can solve by three methods, but uh, uh, force and torque is the easiest one. In a situation when force and torque you don't understand, then you apply the energy. So for energy, I need to write a, a generalized coordinate and <coughs> for mean position, we can see that for mean position, the potential energy with respect to the mean will be how much? It's above by what value? Mg L1 minus cos theta, if you remember, in terms of theta. Yes. And uh, yes, the kinetic energy, we can just write as half mv square because we never know the answer. So we just write half mv square. And the energy of oscillation is constant. And the rate of uh, change of energy of oscillation is zero. It means uh, <coughs> du by dt plus dk by dt is always zero. So you differentiate both the answer and equate to zero, you will get the answer. So what do we get by the way? So you can get uh, mg zero cross it sin theta minus n plus and then d theta by dt chain rule and this will become <coughs> half mm -hmm. 2v db by dt. So m consensus. So what we get is a gl sin theta and uh, d theta by dt plus uh, V dB by, which is A actually, acceleration. acceleration. Now, uh, now there are two ways to solve them. I mean, either you convert this into alpha and all. Uh, so V dB by dt, this is the tangential expression and tangential expression we can write as alpha into R, hmm? like that, easy. Also, what you can realize that uh, the velocity will be nothing but the omega into R. So this is, you can convert into omega term. So V, we can also write as D theta by dt into L. So in a way, you can say D theta by dt will be how much? V by L. See, if you want, you can write this way also. So, <coughs> this will become uh, GL sine theta into V by L, just for the sake of writing V. And uh, AT, we can write as uh, alpha into L. That's tangential expression. Because V is omega L, so alpha uh, A is alpha into L. This is from the chapter of rotational dynamics. <coughs> so, V also cancels out. And because of a small angle, we can just set as a, this also. So G theta plus alpha L equals to zero. Alpha is minus GL by L theta. So you can see eventually all will lead to the same answer. So no matter how you approach the problem, uh, it will lead to the same answer. But you can see the energy is even getting more complex in this case. So we are happy with the torque method, right? In most of the situation, torque and force method will be easier. Uh, except some uh, extraordinary situation. So, okay. so I am not going to do the other problem like uh, elevator and all those problems because you can understand what to do in those situations. <laughs> so next we can learn is something called uh, Physical pendulum. This is also known as a compound pendulum. Just try there. This is still not there. They just log in and they go away. Anything. So what is physical pendulum? Like 
if a, we have a body instead of a particle like a tiny bob we have a body full fledged body with dimension So we have a body of random shape, but the point of suspension is somewhere there. You can see this, is, this will be the like axis of oscillation. Think this way. It's uh, normal to the plane. And then what we do is, <coughs> so this body will have center mass somewhere, right? And at equilibrium, we know that center mass must be somewhere below the suspension. So it must be in some vertical line only. <coughs> so let's say this is center mass. And the separation between the O2 center mass, what we call? Length of pendulum. Do you remember this? So for any pendulum, the length is defined as separation between the point of suspension to the center mass. It is clear? Yes. So uh, this point of suspension can be in the form of ICR also? Yeah, yeah. Why not? See, the whole idea is equilibrium. At equilibrium, you can always check the suspension. So we only check the, we take the equilibrium as the uh, point of suspension, not other moving conditions. Once you know where is the equilibrium position, you can check the axis there. That is your axis of oscillation. Okay. So now the length of pendulum is a known value, it's L. So the gravity will act at the center mass, right? Mg will act there. So it is a simple question. If I tilt it, if I tilt this uh, body, I will not draw the body. It's very difficult to draw. Even if I try, I will fail miserably. So I have tried many times. But... Okay, let me see. Try. I don't know. I'm not able to go tilted the same way. Lucky.
Any more double guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir.